problem 18 it reads two identical sleeves a and b each of mass m can slide without friction on a fixed horizontal rod a lot a load c of mass 2m is suspended from the midpoint of light inextensible cord of length l is equal to 3 root 3 meter which is connecting the sleeves a and b initially the sleeves are at separation l and the load is held motionless what can you conclude about subsequent motion after the load is released acceleration of free fall is given as a 10 so situation is like this initially these sleeves were apart and this c load was somewhere in mid and then it was released so it is falling downside sleeves are moving in this manner and we need to talk about maximum speed achieved by the sleeves maximum speed acquired by the load descend load descent by what amount when the maximum speed is appearing and about the net force on the system so let's consider the figure that i have drawn over here this rod is fixed the sleeves are moving and this is moving downward now let's consider this instant when the angle is theta as shown in the figure and these sleeves are going to move with the same sp speed but opposite directions why because uh, we can say in horizontal direction there is to be linear momentum conservation initially there was no momentum in the horizontal direction so finally there should not be any momentum in the horizontal direction so this momentum and this momentum must cancel out and this block has to, or particle has to go downside so it won't have any momentum in the horizontal direction so that momentum conservation ensures that the two speeds should be identical let's consider the load of two m mass is moving downward with velocity v prime now since this is total length is l so one half is going to be l by two let's consider this load has descended a distance y downside now in this general situation we will say uh, we can relate these velocities using constant relation and that's the summation t dot v must be zero so here the tension in this is going to be in this direction so t and v will have a theta angle in between so that's going to be t v cos theta as a dot product similarly this sleeve will have a tension t and v angle theta so that will also have a t v cos theta as a dot product and we are summing them up now you will find if there is a t so there is going to be 2t upward and v, v dash downward so there is going to be minus 2t uh, or we can say right like this uh, t will be here acting t will be here acting so this is going to be 90 minus theta angle and you'll find this velocity direction uh, this will be having a component in this direction as a sine theta so there will be 2t sine theta and will be opposite to the velocity so that will bring a minus sign so point is we will have a tv cos theta tv cos theta minus 2t sine theta v dash that has to be zero as per this constant relation so you'll find t is getting cancelled out and v prime is coming coming as uh, v cos theta by sin theta that is cot theta or we can write v is going to be equal to v dash into tan theta so that's a constant relation that simply says v dash and v are related with this theta moreover we know there is no friction so uh, we can go for energy conservation or we can use work energy theorem so work will be done only by this gravitational force so work done by gravity must be equal to change in kinetic energy and uh, work done by gravity is going to be mass into gravity into the height it has descended down so that's 2 mgy this must be equal to the kinetic energy of the entire system that means kinetic energy of this sleeve this sleeve so it's going to be half mv square for one into two that is for both the sleeves and plus half mass into velocity square for this load mass is 2m velocity is v prime so it's going to be like half 2m v dash square now from here we can say we can see this m is getting cancelled out and uh, then after it's it's simplified like 2 g y is equal to from here it will be v square from here it will be v prime square so we got another important equation v square plus v dash square is equal to 2 g y now you see uh, we got two equations very important equations and as far as unknowns are concerned there are so many unknowns right 
So what uh, we can do, we can use these two equations. And let's say first we are talking about the load, uh, how the load is going to, uh, load's velocity or speed is going to vary. So what we can do, we can borrow V from here as uh, V dash tan theta and substitute in the second one. So that will be 2GY is equal to V dash tan theta square plus V dash square. We take the V dash square as a common, so 1 plus tan square theta, which becomes sec square theta. So we got to know V dash sec square theta is equal to 2GY. Now, what is the Y? You can use this right angle triangle at this instant, and we can write Y is going to be L by 2 sine theta. So if we apply sine theta, the perpendicular divided by hypotenuse, so that will be y now we can substitute the y over here as well when we substitute y over here so that becomes v dash square is equal to 2g in place of y we are going to write l by 2 sin theta so this 2 and this 2 get cancelled out so i have written directly it's going to be gl sin theta and this sec square theta can be taken this side so that becomes cos square theta now if you look this expression carefully this gives the velocity of load as a function of theta now since option b is asking for the velocity of uh, load which is max so that means we need to maximize this expression now we want to maximize this expression we can use maxima minima concepts or we can further simplify the writing this cos square theta as 1 minus sine square theta so that will become sine theta into minus sine cube theta now this term has to be maximized. Now as per the rules of maximization, we can think of this sine theta as x. So this will be x minus x cube. And if we get any function y is equal to, or let's say any function f is equal to x minus x cube, and we need to maximize it. So we need to differentiate this with respect to x. So that will be one minus three x square. And then we put we need to put this differentiation as zero so that will lead to x square is equal to one by three that means x must be equal to one by root three what is x x has been taken as a sine theta so sine theta must be equal to one by root three sine theta must be equal to one by root three in order to ensure that v dash or v prime is maximum so by using the concept of this maxima and minima we has we have differentiated in equated to zero, then we came to know that this will have a maximum value when sine theta becomes one by root three. Now let's put the sine theta back on this. So we will be having this V prime as max. So this V prime max is going to be square root of this number, which is G L, L value is root three root three. So I have substituted L value and sine theta, which is one by root three and sine cube theta, so 1 by root 3 cube is going to be 1 by 3 root 3. Now if you get this 3 root 3 inside, then you'll find it's going to be 3 and this is going to be 1. 3 minus 1 is 2. So it turned out to be root 2g. And g is 10, so that comes out to be root 20, which turned out to be 2 root 5 meter per second. So it says this load is going to gain max velocity as 2 root 5 meter per second and it will occur when sine theta uh, theta as we have taken over here becomes 1 by root 3. So option B says maximum speed of the load or uh, required by the load is going to be 2 root 5 meter per second. Yes, that's what we have calculated. So B is correct. Now option to check option C, it says uh, when load acquires maximum speed, what is the height it descends to? That means it is asking about the y value when v prime is max. That means when theta is such that sine theta is equal to 1 by root 3. So we can substitute sine theta over here to get the y value. So when v dash is max, then y is L by 2 sine theta and sine theta is 1 by root 3. So that becomes L by 2 root 3 and L is 3 root 3. So that turned out to be 3 by 2 which is nothing but 1.5 so that says load has to go down by 1.5 meter 1.5 meter to acquire the max speed that means option c is also correct so we have checked option a uh, option b and option c both both are uh, correct now we need to check option a as well which says the speed of sleeves now to get the speed of sleeve, we need to use this expression. That means V is equal to V dash tan theta. 
now v is equal to v dash tan theta now v dash we have calculated is in general this expression is the for v dash so uh, it will be uh, let's square this expression so v square so it's going to like v square is equal to v dash square tan square theta v prime square is this number gl sin theta cos square theta so that's the gl sin theta cos square theta we need to multiply by tan square theta so we multiplied by tan square theta now if you write tan square theta it's a sin square theta by cos square theta cos square theta will get cancelled out so that will become sin cube theta so point is velocity of sleeve square is gl sin cube theta now gl is a constant number sin theta is going to or this theta is going to decide uh, when this v is going to be max and we know uh, sin cube will be maximum when sin is maximum sin theta is maximum and sin theta's maximum value is 1 when it is uh, when theta is uh, 90 degree then we can see whether this 90 degree is achievable now this theta keeps on increasing when the sleeves are going to meet together then this angle will be roughly 90 at that instant v will become max that means sleeve will have a maximum velocity when they are about to collide and that max will speed is going to be square root of gl g is 10 l is 3 root 3 so that comes out to be square root of uh, 30 root 3 which is definitely not uh, root 10 that means a is not correct response so a is not correct b and c are correct that we have identified now to check the last one which says before the sleeve collides collide the net force on the system consists of sleeves and cord uh, this uh, load this becomes zero once now you see uh, when this v prime became max that means rate of change of v dash was zero that means there was no force acting in the vertical direction on this load so there was no force acting on those lo this load in the vertical direction sim and and the force on these uh, sleeves in the vertical direction is balanced that means at that particular theta we find that uh, acceleration of 2m is zero which says total force on the system in the y direction is zero including the sleeve cord and load and we know the force in the x direction is all already zero because there's no friction acting that says the force net force on this entire system became zero once only once because this acceleration became zero when v dash became max and v dash will be max for a one only once in the journey because we got sin theta is equal to 1 by root 3 so that will give uh, one particular theta between 0 to 90 degree uh, which ensure this value that means it says d option is also correct so finally we got b c and d as correct responses thank you